Yes, but uh, anyone knows this drawing of Da Vinci, 1500s? Yeah. Yes. So this is Da Vinci uh, painting on on the on the left. Uh, basically, in 1500s, he realized that sunlight reflected from Earth lit up the lunar night. 1500s. This is an art. This is the painting. But yet, it is a great scientific discovery that he did at that time through his imagination, through his thought, through Earth. his brains. Earth shine. That's right, that's oh. right. And this one is a painting that we did in um, our mission, 1117. Uh, it was a fun exercise. I encourage you to do it at home. It's kind of fun. You have five people, five people uh, with closed eyes. And the first person who's standing in front of the canvas is painting. So the last person who is in the chain of these people going to draw uh, a uh, a shape or whatever is the task of this exercise or intention of this exercise. And then this shape will be passed along the chain until it hits the first person who's going to draw it on a canvas. So, well, this yellow thing, I was painting it the last in the chain and it was a sun. Well, it didn't come out exactly like a sun, yeah. but <laughs> I, still, I still like it. I still, I still think it's a piece of art and uh, I put it on my wall in the house and I enjoy looking at it. <laughs> uh, James Webb, the importance of, uh, of the art. He was the administrator in NASA, you can read his quote, but he realized the importance of art and started implementing the art program. Um, uh, indeed, art helps to document the events, but it also gives us a glimpse at the experience of the astronaut himself. Uh, Alan Bean, astronaut, he stepped on the moon, he had his own um, painting uh, Space on Earth, 240,000 kilometers away, uh, when he first did that, and then he painted this. He said, if I would be just uh, documenting, I would use all the gray colors, but I'm an artist, and I add some colors. He mm -hmm. had some beautiful yellow, beautiful uh, purple to his paintings. Uh, he saw a great importance in the art uh, for the humanity and for the astronauts. So as we discussed briefly, you see a slight change in, 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 uh, in how we do the countermeasures to psychological problems. When it was connected to astronaut feeling closer to home, right now it's we implementing more and more technologies, VR technology, synthetic biology, growing, uh, growing plants in space, food, right? We also, we need, we need, we need all of that. Um, and sure thing, VR and other technologies can be a great step for us for countermeasures because it deals with psychological problems, it deals with interpersonal problems, it can solve some problems in habitability, you can go for a walk uh, in the beautiful mountains on Earth using VR technology, sure thing, you can do all of that. Uh, but there are still a lot of things, and I wanted to include this slide because I think those impose a great, great question still. Low duration space flight, hard to predict, physiological effects including, not to say anything about the psychological as well. Uh, commercial sector is growing. I don't know how we're going to send 100 people in space to Mars, I really don't know. Um, if you want to talk about it more, email me. Mm -hmm. uh, medical facilities on board should be adequately respond to any trauma and emergency and ho uh, cope with adaptive responses. I don't think we're still there yet. Uh, and of course the further exploration in terms of the psychology and, and other issues like ethics and technicalities need to be performed in the uh, areas of gerontology, sexuality, and of course if, uh, God forbid, someone dies, uh, someone dies in space. Uh, I love Nikola Tesla, so he said, he said, he said, I start work here. I work from my brain until I have every single detail of what I want to create. And when I see the functionality in my brain, I create it. And that, that's how he filed over a thousand patterns and uh, I, I just admire his work very much. And his thought confirms the new uh, the new discoveries in the neuroplasticity and, and uh, researchers talking about the brain. Uh, thought, emotion and action trigger neural activity which can lead to reorganization of the brain shaping future psychological experience which will lead us to uh, where we become active agents in the construction of our own neurobiology and of course our lives. Um, 
All right. So even, uh, you know, what I wanted to say in conclusion, that no matter what tools we use, Mac, PC, or, <laughs> or <laughs> VR technologies, or other technologies, though, uh, those are still, as the countermeasures of psychological issues, those are just the tools. We need to look deeper in the person who will implement those tools, because in the end of the day, in the uncertain journey to Mars, it will be only two things, humanity and imagination. Thank you so much. Uh, I wanted to present this. So yeah, there was another funny story, uh, but probably I'm, I'm going to skip that one. Uh, she got me in trouble when I was presenting in Washington. She's the founder of uh, Dr. Susan Jewell is the founder of Mars Academy USA, and I just want to give her this T-shirt today because I love her very much, and she gets me in trouble. So when on Mars, do as the Martians do. This is the first and unique T-shirt for you. Oh <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you folks. <laughs>